Hello, everyone. Good on, good morning, good afternoon, etc. Good morning. Oh. So, Hello. please. Hi, uh, Elena. How are you? You're ready. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm really good. Yeah, ready. Um. So I'm going to uh, wait two minutes because people are normally um, late, late in the sense of a couple of minutes. Uh, the other thing is that we are going to record this session like every other session. Uh, the recording has already started. Two things before we start. One, hyperledger uh, code of conduct. We are meant to be going by the hyperledger code of conduct, which says that we will treat each other with respect even when we are disagreeing with people or even when we are agreeing with people. Uh, please be respectful of each other. The other one is the antitrust policy. We uh, go by the hyperledger antitrust policy, which means that we do not engage in any antitrust uh, activities. That is the, these are the only two requirements for participating in this call. And of course, we also know that all the material that is developed and put into play here are completely open source um, under the Apache uh, 2.0 for code and uh, the other open source open source um, licensing for everything else. So, If you can, please add your uh, name to the end of the uh, to the list. Uh, let's help each other develop the uh, meeting uh, minutes. And we are going to start off with Elena, who's going to describe the challenges of testing DLT software for financial market infrastructure uh, and uh, Exact Pro has been in this business for a while. She is a researcher and business development manager in Exact Pro. She'll take it from here now. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vipin. Um, uh, yes, uh, so thank you so much for having me today. And uh, this is really exciting for me to be uh, part of this group. Uh, just a couple of uh, words about who I am. Um, as Vipin said, I represent Exactro and we are a firm who uh, is focused on software testing for financial sector. As a business development manager, I'm responsible for partnerships and uh, events here in the US. Uh, and uh, I'm also a part of the Exact Pro research team, uh, which means uh, that I take part in uh, our, our research activities, uh, be it a research paper submissions, or maybe speaking at the conferences, or maybe making the overviews of, um, uh, for some internal use. And uh, this is exactly the reason that uh, why uh, I am uh, also a part of this group, uh, because the discussions that you give here are really high quality and uh, they are really important for us uh, because they give uh, us, uh, help us to understand um, what's going on in the capital markets uh, sector um, related to the DLT uh, domain. Uh, so let me share my screen, uh, just a couple of seconds. And I will start with the presentation. Okay, can you hear, uh, can you see it okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And here we go. 
All right. Uh, so um, uh, just maybe a couple of um, words about uh, the company itself. Uh, so Exact pro, uh, provides quality assurance services for exchanges, clearing houses, investment banks, brokers, and uh, some other financial institutions uh, performing both functional and non-functional testing. And uh, we've been uh, a part of the London Stock Exchange Group between 2015 and 2018. In January 2018, uh, Exact Pro completed a management buyout from LSG. We uh, are headquartered in London. Uh, we also have uh, operations uh, in the US, uh, in Georgia, Georgia, the country, uh, and we have several offices uh, in Eastern Europe. Exapro currently employs almost uh, 600 specialists, and uh, as I mentioned, our focus is uh, mainly in uh, financial market infrastructures, and our current uh, clients are quite diverse in terms of their ge geography. We have clients in uh, over 20 locations on all six uh, continents. And from the beginning, uh, the main focus was on uh, traditional technology. Uh, so our first engagements here were in the trading and post-trade areas. And then um, maybe a couple of years ago, um, we got interested in the distributed ledger technology and we tried ourselves in a couple of DLT projects. But at that time, most of DLT was uh, that uh, early, day, uh, early day attempts to build an application and uh, to prove that it actually works. Uh, and uh, the whole idea of testing is exactly the opposite, uh, to stress this system uh, to its limits, uh, to expose it to, uh, to some stress and to expose its weakest points and uh, to see what happens in the um, worst case scenario. Uh, so back then the industry was not exactly ready for uh, really extensive testing, but uh, surprisingly quite quickly it came up with the solutions uh, that needed real testing. First it happened in the area of DLT per se, and then we were also contacted by uh, some digital exchanges for whom testing turned out to be um, extremely important uh, given they need, the, uh, need to be established uh, as part of the capital market community. Uh, and uh, most of them are still uh, struggling with the uh, regulatory um, challenges. And <clears throat> just uh, for you to understand the context of our work, uh, I'd like to describe our general approach to testing of traditional technology. Uh, what is usually involved here uh, from a software testing perspective. Uh, as everyone here knows, I think the underlying technology in the financial sector is extremely complex. Uh, first, the, the complexity is caused by the structure of a typical platform within a systemically important um, infrastructure. The most vivid case study for testing would be uh, probably a post-trade system, which uh, can have about um, like 80 inward and outward connections, dozens of components, uh, sophisticated system dependencies like uh, upstream and downstream. Uh, such systems also have complex participant structures. So they work with lots of asset classes um, and uh, they are accessed via diverse APIs and protocols. And the second uh, aspect of this complexity is um, the life cycle of such a system uh, because uh, the system's daily activities involves um, for, again, for post-trade, for example, it's trade uploads, so different calculations, computations, margin runs, so settlement sessions, and so on and so forth. And uh, all of those activities uh, are performed uh, every day. In, uh, they happen in a predefined order, and they happen at predefined times. Uh, and they depend on each other. And actually, what uh, does it mean um, for us in terms of software testing. Uh, that uh, means that to test such a system properly, we will need to test all these uh, repeatedly happening processes and to test them with all the multitude of parameters. So in other words, this leads to hundreds of millions of tests, uh, which is apparently a problem that can be approached 
uh, only with the automation. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, so it's uh, already enough complexity to deal with uh, for, from the software testing uh, perspective, even before DLT is brought into the picture. So, uh, for that, uh, for, for that, uh, even for pre-DLT, I mean, uh, technology, we used to address this complexity with our test automation tools, and here on these slides, uh, um, there are just two examples of those. Uh, so, um, uh, one of the tools uh, is um, uh, aimed uh, um, for um, testing uh, the complex scenarios and business life cycles, uh, and uh, it supports uh, concurrent work uh, with multiple gateways uh, with diverse protocols and APIs. And uh, on top of uh, this tool, there was an enhancement uh, allowing uh, testing at the confluence on, uh, of functional and non-functional testing. So uh, that was the pre-DLT uh, era. And uh, then from, uh, we noticed that financial institutions uh, started uh, gradually adopting DLT, which of course required a significant transformation and replacement of the core parts of the platforms. So to address those changes, we started to think about what the test approach for new transport platforms should be like. And uh, we decided to accommodate the test approach and we um, needed to understand the new challenges, the challenges introduced by the DLT. And at the very beginning, it was absolutely clear that all the challenges around the complexity are uh, in place. Uh, so the traditional challenges didn't go away and uh, DLT uh, did not uh, eliminate them, of course. Uh, in fact, uh, they became even more pronounced uh, now because of the hybrid nature of the new platforms. So, uh, compared to traditional systems, DLT platforms pose additional challenges in terms of quality assurance. And uh, these stem from the necessity to verify the interoperability of nodes in the network. Uh, because there are a large number of connection permutations between them and you need to understand the differences between varying permissioning logic. Um, these are also, there are also challenges um, stemming from the non-functional requirements to DLT platforms. They have to be really high performing, um, having considerable transaction throughput and um, another requirement here is very high availability, especially in those components which um, are aimed to ensure, uh, ensure um, the correctness around the logic of the ledger states and their correct uh, and smart contracts and the correct propagation of um, the changes across the network. Uh, and uh, maybe, yeah, and maybe another weak point uh, here is, of course, uh, continuous upgrades where there is a risk that something will go wrong. And again, the error could be propagated uh, to the entire network. Uh, apparently, to address those challenges, we need uh, a two-pronged approach with both uh, functional and non-functional testing, be it testing of the network plumbing itself or the distributed apps. So we uh, found here um, uh, that there are a number of uh, test tools uh, properties that we needed for testing DLT. And uh, as for the platform itself, uh, our case study that you can see on this uh, slide uh, covers the experience with the um, uh, R3 Corda technology. Uh, from the functional point of view, um, the existing testing tools needed to be improved with the following uh, capabilities. So as you can see on the di uh, diagram, uh, it uh, represents main uh, DLT system components. It is a network of nodes and our tool uh, was used uh, for extensive end-to-end -end test automation of um, the scenario it, uh, and it was uh, adapted so that uh, we could simulate main node functions on the Corda ledger in order um, to send a transaction with certain parameters. Uh, we predefined them in the automated script and uh, such a script we internally call a matrix, uh, but actually it is a 
file in a CSV format. During testing, a whole set of matrices is run concurrently through multiple connections. And for different connections, uh, we can trigger here the interaction between the nodes and uh, we can uh, check the results uh, in vaults. And uh, some uh, of the other um, enhancements are also listed uh, on the slide. So this is um, uh, around uh, nodes uh, deployment, uh, ability of four depths uh, deployment, so nodes administration, and uh, so on and uh, so forth. So this was a case study for testing um, the network itself. Uh, um, and uh, from the functional point of view. And the next slide uh, demonstrate the uh, approach to the very same uh, for the network, but from the non-functional point of view. Um, <clears throat> so as you, again, um, you may know, a non-functional testing of any platform is uh, extremely complex and it requires robust configuration and may even evolve, involve some preliminary development activities around it. So to run automated non-functional tests, it's required to monitor various metrics of the platform under test and its hardware, uh, hardware usage. It is also very important to uh, have the option to start, to stop, to adjust uh, load injection or some other actions uh, based on the current system state. So uh, the executor automation framework uh, allows uh, um, the initiation of flows across a uh, large scale network of nodes uh, and uh, we can uh, do it uh, against a remote network. We use open source tools here to gather metrics, to visualize the results uh, and uh, we are now able to uh, cover various non-functional testing types. So, as you can see here in the slide, it's load and stress testing, failover um, testing, um, soak testing, and uh, uh, the measurement of latency and uh, performance. The uh, last uh, two case studies uh, are um, more <laughs> examples of functional testing of distributed apps. Um, as in contrast to uh, testing the network plumbing itself. So in this case, um, um, our test tool was adapted to a simulation of nodes uh, for the trade reconciliation and position update uh, business flow. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, for two parties and a CCP. Uh, so the, for this uh, scenario, uh, of course, this is a much uh, simpler case. And the, in this example, testing was orchestrated using just exact raw test tools. Uh, some of the frame, framework components uh, emulated the nodes. Uh, some of them triggered uh, some actions uh, through RPC calls. Um, and some performed checks on the ledger. And uh, another uh, case study is again, again uh, uh, around the business layer, and it is the one with the digital asset modeling language, DAML. And here we used uh, digital assets uh, swaps uh, lifecycle module um, application, uh, which was uh, based uh, on the ISDA CDM model. In this case, uh, the simulation that we did uh, was uh, performed uh, in one of the parties node as well uh, as the in, in the market data provider node, plus uh, testing framework emulated time shifts to facilitate the checks uh, which were associated with a particular uh, life cycle events uh, in a swap. Uh, so this is basically it uh, outlined the pains that we had before with testing traditional platforms within large scale uh, market infrastructures and uh, shared some examples of how one can adjust their testing to fit the new needs um, which are, emerged, uh, are emerging with DLT. So thank you. Thank you so much. Elena, congratulations. It's a very comprehensive look at the complex uh, landscape. Uh, maybe, maybe, 
we went through it a little fast, but I'm sure people have questions, okay. uh, especially since I noticed Jim on the um, call. He's uh, already asked questions on the Zoom. It says, uh, did you use JMeter for loads? Did you test CICD and change management? Mm -hmm. How do you define bad test data cases? Anyway, you can read just like, uh, just like I can, obviously but I'm just drawing your attention to the uh, questions on the uh, let, let me, uh, Right now, I'm looking at, this, uh, at my presentation, so maybe I'm stopping. No, it's okay. You can, you can uh, I can read it out to you. We can answer yeah, that. Uh, I'm looking at it uh, right now. Uh, so uh, regarding the first question um, uh, about the J-meter, uh, we uh, used, uh, we use uh, a an internal tool uh, for that. So to generate the load, we use uh, our own uh, load injector, which uh, which um, in some way is similar to JMeter, but uh, it is more um, adjusted to our uh, needs, uh, to our specific knowledge domain area. So it's more uh, uh, it's more focused on the uh, trading software. So. Uh, for non-functional testing, uh, we uh, mainly use this one. Um, and uh, regarding the um, CI/CD, uh, I uh, yes, we we use uh, open source uh, tools here, and of course we uh, use it extensively in our uh, experience. Uh, so. <laughs> How do you define bad data uh, test cases? Hmm. Uh, well, um, our overall approach is uh, an extensive end-to-end -end testing. So that means that we um, look uh, at everything. Uh, so that's why I started my presentation with this. Um, maybe not really interesting for you overview of the complexities of a typical uh, platform. Uh, so, uh, as you can see in our testing, um, so many things are involved. Um, so we look at the data, we look uh, at uh, data permutations, we look at uh, how data is uh, tr uh, uh, transmitted uh, from one point to another because uh, through different protocols and APIs, uh, the data can be um, changed or for example, if we receive some data from market data feed, we uh, receive it in one format. And uh, if it uh, is received by some uh, custom uh, application or component in, in the uh, platform, uh, and then it's transmitted to some downstream system, the data structure can be changed a little bit. So we test for, for everything for uh, all the permutation. I hope I answered the questions because uh, I think that uh, um, here I uh, you, you can have a thorough understanding of that, right? Uh, the data test cases. So if uh, it doesn't uh, answer your question, so you can al uh, always uh, contact me and I will try to offer you another reply here. So uh, pre and post assertion um, in your trust framework. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure how to answer this. Uh, if so, um, certain languages. So some languages provide, uh, I'll call it capability for pre and post assertions, much like a J unit kind of a thing, right? So you can say that the entering state is X, the uh, exiting state is Y and you can assert that those things are, and then you look for what I call the transformation in the middle, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, and um, I would say that uh, we do not uh, focus a lot on the formal verification here. So it's more of the overall business functioning. And uh, we specialize more on the backtesting, like uh, for APIs uh, and protocols interaction. So uh, we um, treat, uh, we approach testing um, from more black box uh, pers perspective. Thank you. The, the next one is about the uh, 
whether you use some kind of uh, uh, identity, identity, uh, open ID, connect authentication. Uh, I'm afraid I'm uh, I'm not <laughs> uh, familiar with the with this, uh, so um, I'm not. Uh, really uh, basically, what kind of identity model do you use in testing, or you do not? Uh, uh, you just go with one. In other words, like uh, in some um, frameworks like Caliper, mm -hmm. uh, for example, you have a way to spin up hundreds of clients. Mm -hmm. with multiple identities interacting in complex ways because that uh, will uh, simulate the real life. Uh, here, of course, Jim is uh, referring to a specific identity uh, framework called OpenID Connect, uh, mm -hmm. but, but you know, you can use any um, uh, various different ones um, depending on the identity model inside the framework. Yeah, uh, uh, I understand. Uh, it's just um, I'm not uh, so deeply involved in testing so that uh, I, I cannot answer this one, but I can uh, get back with the answer like later, sometime later. I think we have a dedicated page uh, on Hyperledger portal, right? So if it is- Yeah, 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 we, we do. Uh, and uh, questions can be asked and answered there. Uh, yeah, and this is the one I just uh, have to go to my team and, uh, and just- answer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, these are, uh, I mean, testing is a vast uh, um, sort of landscape. And I see that money has his hand up. So obviously he's got, uh, he's got some question. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Elena, uh, thanks for a great presentation. Um, can you elaborate more on the digital asset and the CDM testing uh, with respect to IRS and CD CDS, um, considering the fact that CDM is, you know, continuing to do, make a lot of changes? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do this testing? What did you, how or when did you do the testing? Um, you could give me more, you know, elaborate a bit more on the CDM testing itself would be great. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I wouldn't call that uh, the testing of CDM. So this wasn't a testing uh, of the underlying model because, as you know, uh, uh, CDM is a framework um, like it is a description of business scenarios, right? Uh, which was used uh, uh, by uh, the demo SDK. And uh, we focused here more on the application level. So we uh, simulated the business flow. We tested the, um, the business uh, logic, uh, how everything uh, is working uh, on the um, level of this very application. So it was a proof of concept uh, project. So it wasn't uh, like a production case. Uh, so, and Yes, and maybe um, some <laughs> more interesting detail on CDM. Uh, we were not only testing this, uh, we uh, actually participated in hackathon and we uh, developed some, uh, even developed some application, um, but on core, the framework uh, using CDM. So if you heard about this dairy hack, um, yeah, 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 we, we participated as well. Yeah, yeah, we were participants in Singapore and we took the prize for best CDM adoption or something like that. But it was cool, let's say, yeah, right ourselves here. Uh, but from the development point of view, it wasn't from testing perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else has uh, questions for Elena? No, but I did want to say that, that was an excellent presentation. Um, obviously, you put more than a couple months of effort into building out this uh, extensive test uh, environment, which is really robust. Um, and, and I can agree, having been on the other side of the fence um, at Fidelity, having responsibility for those systems, that um, a much higher level of testing uh, is needed. So the fact that, in a sense, your company provides that, that's a big, big value uh, service. And there's very few companies, honestly, 
that have a high focus um, on what I call bad data, which is more important than big data uh, mm -hmm. in resolving things. And I can almost separate them. And I say all of the broker dealers that you're familiar with mm -hmm. don't have a super high um, uh, threshold or a, I'll call it a quality pain point. Whereas when I flipped it around to um, uh, 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 the JP Morgan um, uh, data services, those guys were way up there on the food chain in terms of the priority for uh, accurate data. Um, so there are some differences there and, and you kind of have to fill the gap with the client where they don't have that same standard, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, anybody uh, else? Yeah, I have a question uh, related to uh, the most common errors, right, or mistakes uh, as you work with many clients. If you were to maybe highlight some of the, the main um, issues that you encounter uh, on the, the test design or uh, if you could share with us some, some of the uh, most common occurrences. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I think I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not about uh, speaking about the details here, but uh, maybe the main pain point uh, that we experience uh, is connected with the underestimation of the complexity of the platform. So everybody is talking about digital transformation, about uh, I don't know, AI and DLT and everything. And they think that uh, those new technologies pose um, huge risk. But in fact, the, um, the most risk, uh, the most of the risk stems from the uh, non-determinism non of the current platforms because they are really complex and no one really understands how they uh, work. I mean in depth, in depth. So there is no in-depth uh, understanding of the exact uh, workflow of uh, what if we change these data or, and uh, what it will, uh, what will happen, especially this is this makes sense in the face of the crisis that we uh, can now uh, see because um, uh, before we had lots of problems uh, with stakeholders uh, of the system that, uh, that we tested uh, because uh, sometimes we um, came there and we tried to um, perform some tests but uh, they came back and said, oh, okay, guys, this scenario is really unrealistic, so why are you doing it at all? And especially this can be seen in non-functional testing, performance testing, because we uh, test at insane uh, levels of uh, loads, and uh, the clients think that we just want to break the system actually this is true we uh, we try to break the system because it is important to uh, see the system's reaction we have to be sure that it uh, has uh, certain failover cap capabilities but uh, the um, spike in the volatility showed that uh, some scenarios which uh, we were told were unrealistic they proved to be realistic in current situation so this is definitely was a mistake uh, of uh, some of our clients uh, not to understand this. Uh, well, what else? Uh, um, yes, uh, most of the problems that we uncover, um, they are not in some particular place of an application or in some particular component. So I cannot say that some components are innately prone to these uh, errors, but it is rather at the confluence. It can be either at the confluence of like uh, DLT to non-DLT connection. It can be at the confluence of functional and non-functional testing, because if we create just some load, we cannot see, uh, uh, we can not see an error, we can like uh, miss it. Or uh, vice versa, doing functional testing, we can again uh, miss it. But uh, if we um, do like a smart uh, simulation or smart uh, model-based based testing, uh, where, uh, which involves generation of uh, lots of scenarios and uh, loading the system under test uh, with these scenarios, uh, uh, this um, using this uh, approach, we can find some errors. And again, 
one more uh, thing I can think about uh, is uh, the errors which occur when we um, upgrade systems, uh, which we um, when we uh, upgrade some components of the nodes. So something that is related to this case. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, it was really insightful. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Elena, can I ask you one more question? Um, a major challenge for you, I assume you guys have a, it's not a, um, a project approach, but you probably have an ongoing relationship as the test environment for a given company, right? Mm. You're their testing service, correct? Normally, I would assume. Um, so say it again. Well, what, what I mean, what I'm trying to say is a company doesn't hire your company to come in and say, just test temporarily. They're hiring your company, I assume, to do, I'll call it continuous testing over a long term. We have uh, different engagements. Uh, okay. You're absolutely right that we do have multi-year service agreements, uh, but uh, so, there are lots right. of cases. So if I look at your multi-year service agreements where you're considered the primary testing facility uh, you know, for a company, um, how are you integrated into their change management system? Because every time they make a change, it would impact your testing. So how does that integration process work for you? Uh, the answer is simple. Our testing framework uh, is uh, usually um, deployed into the client's framework. So uh, it's uh, in their network, it's uh, on their premises, or it's in their cloud. So the uh, testing tools are like a uh, part of this framework there they have internal access and so on and so forth and i think it's a really small percentage of our testing that is performed on our own frameworks so this is mainly on our Thank you. infrastructures anyone else has uh, any questions If not, I have some. Okay. Um, you mentioned, you know, you brought up the question of black swans. Basically, nobody, nobody is uh, aware of the extent of uh, the stress scenario until it actually happens, uh, which is the true definition of a black swan because it is not within people's minds to think about these things. Uh, uh, I myself, when I was running a mortgage uh, backed security uh, system uh, between 2008 and 2016, we created a uh, test like pandemic. We did create tests like a nuclear attack in Times Square. Uh, we did create uh, scenarios like uh, California earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this, of course, uh, resulted in a model-based uh, approach saying, you know, the spreads would uh, widen by this mm -hmm. much amount. But uh, the problem is, you know, the spread widen, you know, even that those metrics are uh, difficult to, uh, to project because it's all based on somebody saying, okay, if there is a global pandemic, this is how much the spread will increase by. But it may be not like that at all. Um, so to bring bring all this back into the picture, we, uh, you know, I had um, written something about uh, chaos testing inside um, mm -hmm. inside blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm one uh, because it it is uh, now available on Medium, but uh, uh, we had started thinking about this because. The whole practice of chaos engineering is based on the premise that nobody can have the entire system in their head. I mean, it's impossible for this complex system, which the point that you just made just uh, you know a few minutes ago. Uh, I think this is uh, this is definitely uh, what do you call it the case with with complex systems. So mm -hmm. chaos engineering theory uh, basically tries to inject faults in uh, in a random and chaotic fashion. Yeah, and we are great adepts of this theory. <laughs> yeah. What's what that? 
Uh, yes, uh, we we really are into the theory, and we know about this, and uh, we use some of uh, its uh, uh, principles in our testing. And uh, speaking of the black box ones, uh, we prefer not to think about uh, what happened as a black swan because. Uh, um, apparently, it is uh, more of a white swan because it was so long, um, predicted long ago, and uh, the uh, what we uh, now observe in financial market infrastructures, uh, how they are responding to the crisis, uh, it was uh, actually uh, like uh, tested uh, because uh, again, we always um, uh, we do not. Uh, like hope for the best or something. So um, some firms have uh, certain thresholds. For, for example, uh, there are rules within the company to test something at, um, for example, double of historical maximum. So this is not uh, our case. This is not how we work. Uh, we do not have such th thresholds. So we do not uh, have like any presuppositions uh, what is the bad scenario we just test for the very very worst uh, case scenario so we kill the nodes we uh, um, we try to kill the system components so we we just go for a kill uh, and then we uh, just see what happens, how the system reacts, uh, what's uh, happening, uh, what, uh, what is its behavior. And uh, based on that, uh, so our um, priority is the, the ultimate uh, quality of the system. And uh, our uh, ideology here is that uh, we have to focus on the white swan events that we have it's enough of those and we have uh, to be always prepared for the worst but because you don't uh, think that these are black swans they're all white swans <laughs> yep exactly exactly for our testing so we uh, always anticipate the, those uh, the highest volatility the highest loads the uh, highest outages of the distributed systems. So this is something that uh, we test. Well, that means you live in Australia because uh, black swans were found in Australia. And when the uh, English landed there, they, they saw that uh, these black swans, obviously they were not black swans. They were not anything special for the people who lived there and were used to seeing them every day. So, so, in that sense, yeah. Um, anyway, so it's all very, uh, uh, you know, testing is a very uh, comprehensive practice and it's a very specialist practice. And um, it has to be continuous, like Jim was saying, you know, obviously, whenever there's change, uh, either in the software or in the infrastructure, uh, the deployment itself. Like, you know, you change the number of nodes, you change wh which, uh, you know, if you're going to multi-cloud or if you're doing any other kind of things, those are all changes that affect the software. Uh, one of the other questions I have is you, your uh, practice, uh, your, your slides, are they available or are they not? Mm, yes, uh, I can share them with you. Uh, so, or I, I think I can publish them myself, right? Yeah, you can go to the uh, to the uh, agenda website or meeting website, um, which I've set up. It is a meeting minutes for this call, uh -huh. and you can just uh, download your slides over there, okay. and and um, or maybe link them. Link them. Uh, if you have difficulty doing this, just send them to me. I mean, either way, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, um, you can. Okay, I, I'm going to put the uh, the link in again because I had it earlier because I want people to help me uh, crowdsource uh, mm -hmm. not just the meeting minutes, but uh, you know, 
reactions, their mm -hmm. own presence in the, you know, so I have the um, agenda link in the chat if you if you want to go there. But, you know, I we can have a exchange later and then we can uh, do this there. Okay, and uh, we also have uh, this case study that uh, I uh, partially ran through um, on our website, so it is uh, open for download, so you can <laughs> go ahead and do this. Uh, but of course, I will share some slides as well. That's, that's great because, uh, um, you know, I think uh, it's important that when we come to deployment, we should be thinking about these, uh, you know, testing, even before we uh, get it out into the open. Now, any of these uh, pieces of software or any any anything there that is available mm -hmm. on a demo basis or uh, on a uh, open source basis from your site, or is it all paid uh, stuff? We do not charge for our tools. Uh, we. Uh, um, uh, we have actually some of uh, our tools um, in open source, so it's uh, on our GitHub web, uh, web page. Uh, we also have uh, several videos on the topic, so one of them uh, is here on this uh, very uh, page, uh, which I referred to when I spoke about the uh, case study and maybe there there is uh, and there is also a, um, a video uh, with a, um, covering this case study this is a video i recorded <laughs> from home so during the pandemic already so if you want to see me again <laughs> go ahead to our youtube channel and uh, explore some, some videos there so. yeah yeah i mean you know it's uh it's more the material that is that is uh, very compelling and you're a very sympathetic uh, presenter so that is a very good thing um, anybody else has any more questions on this topic no but uh, it was an awesome presentation elena thank you so much yeah, if I may, one question, one additional question. Uh, Elena, I don't know if you, if you heard about the token taxonomy and uh, the joint initiative that many companies, they are gathering together to define standards agnostic to the platform. And when you think about testing, uh, I know that you may go from a, more, a higher level of abstraction, right? Until maybe to the very fine grain, um, a detailed uh, unit test so in that sense talking about token standards uh, have you have exact pro engaged in any conversations related to a more like a, a business level if you will and how to design comprehensive tests for different uh, token standards uh, whether they are smart contracts right uh, uh, specifically to, to blockchain for instance yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the name of the framework. Was it TTF? Or... Uh, yeah, the Token Taxonomy Framework. It's a, a joint initiative that they are trying to come up with a token templates that would define behaviors and also properties. So yeah. whenever somebody wants to implement those templates, they could be reused and extended to their specific business needs. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that the only place that I've um, I heard about this framework is in this group, in this very group. So thank you so much for sharing this knowledge. Um, and I'm afraid we haven't looked at it yet uh, in terms of testing. So, unfortunately. Yeah, sure. No problem. Thank you. Well, um, you know that uh, we have implemented that e um, yeah. um yeah. which which is based on this uh, framework, and we are adding more. Uh, we we may add more uh, more security definitions on that mm -hmm. framework. But recently, they have migrated to another uh, group called IWA. We talked about it in this mm -hmm. this uh, group before, so. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, um, I think it is going to have the similar effect, let's say, as CDM on the contract side. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is always good to incorporate some standard methods. I see that you are you have in your uh, slides a reference to Swift ISO twenty or twenty two messages, uh, mm -hmm. probably. So these are all standards, but you know the problem with the ISO 20 or 22, for example, is it seems more like a union of existing messaging standards, mm -hmm. and they are not uh, cryptographically sealed or cryptographically uh, uh, integrated um, uh, properly with the lineage and everything else like mm -hmm. CDM is. So we have that, uh, you know. We are coming to the new age in terms of uh, those messages. So I don't know how far this, I mean, I know that ISO 20 or 22 is a recent standard uh, and uh, heavily used in AX, ASX where DAML was very yep. active. Um, but I wonder about the future of these kind of, uh, frameworks which are not, you know, which do not have this uh, internal uh, integrity. In fact, uh, some of the most famous hacks against Swift came because of this lack of uh, lineage or uh, cross-reference because the Bangladesh hack, uh, all the other, you know, system hacks that have been perpetrated against Swift have, call, have come because you can enter the message stream at different points, uh, the weakest link, for example, and create messages that are not integral to the chain, uh, to the to the you know the flow, uh, and hence um, create problems. So I I don't know whether Swift themselves have thought about this. That's another topic for another time, but still, I think the testing uh, could incorporate these these kind of things into mm -hmm. the framework. Um, what what were you saying? Yes, absolutely. Though, um, mm, mm, if if it is uh, more about the functional side, so if. Uh, so we do not uh, do the uh, security testing per se, but um, from the business perspective. So I think this is a very good idea to incorporate this into the testing and um, the ISO uh, 22 is uh, really, uh, we can uh, already see it uh, incorporated in our business scenarios uh, within our clients. So this is of course something that definitely has future. Okay, um, any other questions for Elena before we go to the next two items? Um, I, okay, thank you, Elena. And uh, we will be looking forward to getting a copy of your slides and I will put the recording up which uh, which shows you uh, in your glory talking about all this stuff. It's very, very uh, good um, because this is one of the topics that is often missed. Okay, thank so, you for your time, for your attention. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, two things. One is uh, I would like people to volunteer to do other presentations. Uh, uh, we want a diverse uh, group, uh, diverse uh, presentations on different topics, all dealing with capital markets. Um, so the first thing is I will send out a uh, the biannual report that I'm supposed to be doing. I'll send out a draft copy to people and you can uh, respond to me right away because it is due by the 15th of 
July. The second topic is that we have introduced a new lab proposal for cross-chain settlement instructions. This is based on an interoperability um, situation uh, as a solution to an interoperability, but it goes away from the regular interoperability conversation because it is uh, in the creation of cross-chain messages uh, which are cryptographically bound and integral with uh, lots of different things that uh, attest to the uh, source of the message and also the ways to um, also ways to respond to this in a very uh, non-repudiable way. In that context, several things come to mind. I have already sent out the proposal, but more details will be prepared once the lab is approved. Anybody who wants to participate in that lab can uh, contact me, but uh, we do need uh, people to commit some time to it. Otherwise, uh, you know, we will get nowhere, either in uh, writing the document or doing any, any other stuff there. So Vipin, can I ask the um, uh, call use cases you're describing for interoperability, do they fall in the same domain that the Cactus project is looking at, or are they different? When you say the same domain, I mean, yes, they do fall into the same domain of cross-chain uh, right. uh, interoperability, but this yeah. is very specific as a settlement leg of okay uh, of a uh, asset transfer right okay uh, so so, so we are going we are we are starting small in other words we are going coming from the other end of the spectrum we are not proposing a general solution for all cross chain uh, interoperability which seems to be what uh, cactus is doing by proposing a a series of um, plugins and a plugin architecture that can then take any uh, solution and uh, you can plug it in. Uh, it is possible that we can create this and then plug that into Cactus, but we are not, you know, we, we are just exploring it from the other end. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thanks. So we are almost at time. It has been a delightful hour as always and uh, next week we will have a close reading of the digital dollar project uh, which uh, Karen or Tony had proposed I've also written a couple of articles on Forbes about this in case you're interested uh, there will also be um, a deeper discussion on CBDC Maybe we can bring in the R3 paper uh, into the picture and discuss what it means in terms of implementation. Uh, where do we have to concentrate? We can give our feedback to the Digital Dollar Project as well because they are looking for alternate views. So please, uh, you can get back to me or to the group and uh, after, especially after the next week's presentation, we can uh, talk about sending a formal reply to the DDP. What do you guys think about that? I would like to know in your uh, in emails. Thank you. I'm going to end the recording and the presentation until uh until july 15th then great thanks pippin all right thanks elena thank you okay.